potato digging time! Alberta's doing what Alberta does best. It's just blowing. From my last video, I had a few issues with the Chinese potato digger and it had some alignment issues and about two hours of time, pulled everything apart, uh, put a few washers that I think should have been in there in there. And now, now it's great. From stock, they had this nice, you know, washer on each side and then they just decided not to do that. So I was wondering why the hell only this one had that. So on the inside of this one, I put a washer in there. There was no washer there. And then on the other side, you can see here it was rubbing. So again, I put a washer in there. Now it's not rubbing. Put a washer in on this side. Even snuck one in right there. Then on the back, at the very bottom, so I put two washers on here, there was no washers. And then I put two washers here and this one was really scrubbing. I think that's where my squeak was at. And then I found out that from factory, so they had these like, this on the other side, which was like cocking it in kind of deal. And now it's perfectly straight. Uh, yeah, alignment issues. So I think it probably added a couple thousand hours of extra runtime on this unit just by putting in ten dollars worth of washers. taters in this row I did one row but I noticed that I'm getting a bunch of these that fell like in between and I'm thinking that maybe it's just these bars are set up a little high and that's why they can slip back underneath so I'm just gonna see if I can bend them down because I don't think that, that should be a thing so if you look at all the potatoes that did get out of the ground you think of like a, a combine harvester, you know, you're looking for about 1% loss. That's about 1%, but I think we can make it a little better. The plan is, I bent these down in the middle. So if you get a little potato, if it can't get underneath, you can't get all jammed up. That's kind of the theory I'm hoping for. So to do this, I got this trusty hammer and I'm just giving it a little bit of a, I, I hit to bring them down. I got all these tines and I got them bent down and I got them kind of going in between the bar. So now there's like really no place for a potato to roll back. check everything out and I think I finally got them. It's looking pretty good, rolling off the back nicely.
That's a weird looking one, but it's green. And that's just what I do. I go through each one, taking a look at it. Fine organic potatoes, no spray, lots of flavor out of nice rich dirt. Some of them are kind of funky this year. Out of this row, I ended up with three pails full of potatoes, plus another half pail of potatoes, and then half a pail of little itty bitty ones. I found you. What you gonna do? I found you. Let's head them off. I tried putting them back in, but he just never wants to go back in. Oh, there you are. Oh, and he's gone again. Goodbye, rooster. My newest problem isn't uh, actually the potato digger. It's that uh, when I'm trying to take videos, I'm having a tough time driving straight. But that's no problem. This tractor is equipped with Agopin GPS. I've got the Windows tablet up there. Now that I know that the potato digger is working, uh, the next challenge is I'm going to let it do the driving. Here's my new micro GPS system. So I got just a spark fun board and I've got one uh, ethernet to TTL adapter and then it goes to UDP and then I'm still powering it off USB. I'm soon learning about uh, PoE so the idea would be power would come over ethernet, power this whole unit up so there'd be one more little circuit board and then I'd have the antenna directly attached to and that would go on top of the tractor. Then guard. And, and there we go. I have the garden, so now I should be on the same lines. So I'll hit this, and there we go. I've got all my garden lines set up. So that's all these lines here. And then uh, I shouldn't have to drive. I'm going to go through this row backwards and see if I can find any potatoes that didn't make it to the top and see how many I left. The second pass through, I don't really see too much. Like there's the odd little one that I'm not really concerned about. Oh, yeah, still pretty small. So I think I've found maybe a handful of like tiny, tiny, tiny ones. Other than that, it cleaned up pretty good. We got that nice panda straightness. not do bad on russets at all look at that there's loads of them that was a really good row i got three and a half pails this row here it's just kind of odd stuff so i got a little bit of bites at the beginning This one is good. 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 Yeah, some hills are just, just absolutely that one got hit a little bit. That one will be eaten right away. Yeah, I think that having them bars up high kind of did some damage. Okay, what do we got here? This one's good. This one here is good. Little ones. 
Okay, you don't spill the one for most, because they usually grow to the surface, like this one kept green. These ones are fine. This one got eaten by ants. But if nature's trying to eat your stuff, you're probably growing good stuff. This throw did pretty excellent. I got them picked pretty clean, so now I can do this row and this row and check them again with the potato digger and see if I left anything. And I'm guessing there'll maybe just be a little itty bitty handful. And I just got the one down the middle, but I filled that pail. And then I got a little bit in the bottom. And I got half a pail of little ones and ones that have to be eaten right away. I filled that one. Get you rooster. I'm gonna get you. Yep, I'm gonna get you. I'm never gonna catch that rooster ever. That saves a pile of time. I, I'm, I'm super happy with that digger. So many red potatoes. Just so many of them. Last row. Okay, so this one was next to the seed potato, and it was kind of wet, so I'm just drying it off with dirt. There we go. Still getting some good ones. <coughs> So here you can kind of see the structure of the plant. So you got the uh, plant growing above ground, and then you've got all of these branch tubers all connected together. So you'll start off with a uh, potato in the ground, and they'll start growing these, and you'll start to grow little potatoes all the way along. Yeah, see green, green, green. Those are all green. middle row I actually netted quite a few the second time through still not like a huge amount but there are a couple of good big potatoes I missed just like farm simulator 22 clean now that i got this running good i'm making final adjustment to that uh, first row of tangs so i have this down that's the lowest position so it's at the very bottom and then so there we go that's the bottom and i just took this hammer and i just pounded these until the top of the bar was basically level with the top of these bars and then 100 percent chance no little potatoes escaping unless they are smaller than what would it be an inch so i don't think that's horrible in the all the way up position i've got about three quarters of an inch so the only thing that can roll back in there 
is roughly about three quarters of an inch. Last but not least, I measure center pin to center pin on the top link, 25 inches. And then I record on the implement and I also record the RPM that it runs at. And that way when I go to hook up to it next year, I won't forget, I'll know to put the top link to exactly 25, and, uh, put it at 15 and dig potatoes. I think I did pretty well with the setup of the potato digger. It only leaves like maybe a handful of little pea-sized potatoes behind, maybe one odd big one. So I think it's right on par, if not better than me digging them by hand. It definitely saves a ton of time. It definitely, I'm not sure if you buy the more expensive bow maver, if it's any better, but there was quite a bit of self home tuning to get it to work. That is what dreams are made of. No more manually pulling potatoes out of the ground. This thing saved a phenomenal amount of time.